I'll come back to these things are written as we are continuing to look at the Passion Week of Jesus. Continuing with that night on which he was betrayed. Jesus had just has just been betrayed. And now we read of his arrest and the beginning of his trials. Let's look first of all at verses 54 through 62. Then they seized Jesus and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house, and Peter was following at a distance. And when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat down among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him as he sat in the light and looking closely at him, said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. And a little later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. And after an interval of about an hour, still another insisted, saying, Certainly this man also was with him, for he too is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. And immediately while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the saying of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. This is another part of that passion story that we know very well. We've heard read many times, and, and different gospels are slightly different, but they all have the same point. The denial of Jesus by Peter. Earlier in Luke's gospel, we had read of how Satan had asked Jesus for Peter, that he might be sifted like wheat, that he would go through a struggle even greater than the rest of the apostles, rest of the disciples. And now we see it happening, being questioned and then denying Jesus three times and the Lord himself turning and looking to see Peter at that point. And Peter's response of weeping bitterly over what had happened. Often our lives are like that, aren't they? We know what we need to do. We want to be able to do that. We try hard, but all too often we fail miserably in our obedience to God's word, in our love for other people, in our worship of God himself. We are like Peter. We fail. Let's continue to look at verses 63 through 71. Now the men who were holding Jesus in custody were mocking him as they beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, prophesy, who is it that struck you? And they said many other things against him, blaspheming him. When the day came, the assembly of the elders and the people gathered together, both chief priests and scribes, and they led him away to their council. And they said, if you are the Christ, tell us. But he said to them, if I tell you, you will not believe. And if I ask you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man shall be seated at the right hand of the power of God. So they all said, Are you the Son of God then? And he said to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it from our own lips. This is the first time, the first few verses the first time that Jesus was mocked and beaten on this day. It is still late hours of the night, almost getting close to meeting or morning. When morning comes, they call a meeting of the, the Jewish ruling council, the leaders of the religious and political aspects of the, the Jewish faith. And they asked him the question, are you then the Christ? And Jesus' answer is interesting. He doesn't really answer, but then he gives them more than they're expecting in the answer. He says, um, if I tell you, you will not believe. In other words, it doesn't matter what I say. You're not going to believe what I say. 
And if I ask you the question, ask you what you think you're not going to answer because he's done that with them before. But then he gives the answer. But from now on, the Son of Man shall be seated at the right hand of the power of God. The Son of Man is an Old Testament term. I believe it's from Daniel. That signifies more than such as the Son of Man. It signifies a messenger from God or even God himself. And that he would be seated at the right hand of the power of God. God's right hand, man, that's often where the heir to the throne would sit, the son of the king. So, as Jesus says that, he is showing that, that he is the son of God. So their answer, are you the son of God then? And he said to them, you say that I am. Again, we see this in John's gospel. It's when he says that, he's saying, you say that I am. Um, that is, you are right, but it's not what you expect, not what you're thinking. What they're thinking is that this is blasphemy, that he is making himself God. But Jesus is showing that there is more to it than that. And their response, condemning Jesus. What further testimony do we need? We have heard it from his own lips. A key passage as we are getting ready to see what will happen. They now have the charge against him, although they will make up more charges so that they can get him to go to the cross. But Jesus showing who he is, saying who he is and showing why he has come, to forgive Peter who has sinned against him, denied him three times, to forgive each of us. Tomorrow, we're going to be starting with chapter uh, 24, the trial before Pilate and moving on from there. God bless, we'll talk to you then.